A point and shoot camera but make it tough. That's basically the MO of the TG lineup from OM System, the brand formerly known as Olympus. Now, as you might know, I've been a big fan of Olympus and now OM System for years of my YouTube career. So I was really excited when they reached out and wanted to work together on their latest point and shoot camera. One that can literally withstand pretty much all of the elements. The thing is, I'm not really in those elements uh, very often as I don't find myself in the great outdoors very often, having the kinds of crazy adventures that a camera like this is built for. But that doesn't mean I still can't have fun with a rugged camera that just keeps trucking along. So let's talk about this fun little camera that can do way more than you probably think. Hey, it's Joshua Vergara. What's going on, everybody? This right here is the OM System Tough TG7. Once again, a shout out to OM System for partnering with me on this video and for letting me check out the TG7. I told them straight up that I'm not a cliff diver, I don't do extreme sports, and I probably won't be showing this camera off in the scenarios that it's basically made for. But then that's when they said, it's made for all of that and plenty more, so just go nuts. And you know what, it might be a tough camera, but it's still just a fun point and shoot camera at the end of the day. If you happen to know a bit about tough cameras, well, this one will ultimately be pretty familiar. The TG7 actually retains a lot of the same specs and internal hardware from the TG6, right down to the sensor. We still get a 12 megapixel BSI CMOS sensor in here in a 1 over 2.3 inch size. That megapixel count helps the TG7 capture as much light as possible given the size of the sensor. As for the lens, the effective 25 to 100 millimeter focal length gives a lot of room for different shooting scenarios, from potential landscape photography to a four times zoom into to things that you might encounter when out and about. As far as aperture is concerned, as you go through the zoom range, there is also an aperture range of f2 to f4.9 when wide open as you increase the focal length. So a good amount of light capture and depth of field are both possible under the right circumstances. One thing I do have to point out is that the aperture is semi-fixed. That's just a part of the lens design. As you can see here, the aperture will jump immediately to higher values like f8 coming from the wide end or around f2.8. So for the most part, this camera shines in its auto or scene modes, and if you want to have a little bit of extra control, you do have aperture, but mainly you might be in program, which is fine because the dial then governs the exposure compensation. This lens and sensor has to pull many duties clearly, so it was interesting to see that there is a macro and even microscopic capability here. Of course, it wouldn't be worth calling this camera tough if those optics weren't housed in a body that could take the punishment. And that's exactly what they did with this updated construction. This thing just looks rugged, but it manages to be really pocketable still. You can see it fits in my hand really well, and it can fit in pretty much any pocket. Compared to the last generation, the TG7 has an updated grip, which I definitely appreciated for run and gun shooting situations. I was able to get through a lot of the controls here where everything is a dial or a button uh, pretty easily with just one hand. That said, there is some protection on the camera in the form of this clear lens cover that actually comes off just like a lens mite on one of OM System's mirrorless cameras. There's this little button right here and then you just twist everything right off. What's so great about this is that it opens up a whole slew of accessories that extend the capabilities of the TG7. From a front light that helps with the macro and microscopic photography to lens attachments that make the wide and telephoto capture even more in either zoom direction. I didn't get any of those accessories with my review sample, unfortunately, but I wanted to make sure I highlighted them because they really add to what is a pretty stacked little camera. Back to the build quality, it's definitely made to take some punishment. This is a camera that can get wet, have dust and sand thrown at it, and it can even be dropped from around 7 feet no problem. And the TG7 is actually crush proof. That's uh, not something I thought I would hear about a camera. Uh, the TG7 is crush proof at up to 220 pounds of force. As far as the depths are concerned, well, you can certainly splash water on this thing, but you can submerge this at around 50 feet or 15 meters. I was actually told it's in those situations where you'd probably want the more easily spotted red edition of the camera, which I have right here, as opposed to the black edition that might easily go missing in the darker depths. After all, the camera will sink if you let it go in the water. Speaking of which, the water protection is helped along by these compartment doors, and you can see here that there are dual locks, one for an actual lock and then another one to disengage the door, after which you have this little flap to actually open it up. To close everything, you have to do the first latch, it does take a little bit of effort. And then the door over on the side uh, does have the same dual locking system. It's under this door that there's a micro HDMI port. And yes, that is a USB-C port down there too. Obviously this all ensures that no water and no dust can possibly get in. And this camera without extra housing can then be used for like snorkeling or shallower water activities. Obviously the cover on the front helps with all of that too. 
Now, for those of you who are braiding the elements outside of, let's say, cell phone towers, built-in GPS is on here and is used to log location data throughout photos and videos. There's this little log toggle up here, and by switching it over, uh, all of the data, location data and whatnot, will be embedded into your photo files, and they are viewable in the OMShare app. There are some practical tools that come alongside the GPS, including backtracking of your journey, a barometer, and even a thermometer and compass. Much of this can be accessed even when the camera is turned off, just with the press of the info button for a bit. You only have to press that info button for a little bit, because if you press longer, then the flashlight will turn on right there, which is yet another handy addition. So you might be asking, why have a camera like this when things like a smartphone can easily handle plenty of the more normal outdoorsy stuff just fine? Well, to be fair, dropping a phone in the water can introduce a lot of different problems when it's not like freshwater, or if you're on the beach and sand ends up scratching things even if it doesn't necessarily get into the phone. There's also the matter of actually controlling these smartphone cameras in scenarios where either water can get in the way or your hands are straight up covered. That's why it's all buttons and dials on here, so that any input can still be done where a touchscreen will just be a nuisance. This was literally the case during one of the fun little activities I brought this camera to. We had to take at least one glove off to mess with our phones while the camera did not need such treatment. And you know what? Sometimes a person that wants to get into the great outdoors doesn't want all of the distractions that a smartphone can introduce. Instead, getting memories and just indulging in some good old fashioned nature photography would be the focus. That's the joy of a good point and shoot, and that's what the TG7 gets right at its core. It just so happens that OM System have made sure that pictures and videos aren't the only things that it will do. So cue the accessories, which greatly extend the macro capabilities of this lens. The one that I would have loved to play around with is the light attachment, which goes on just the way that this little cover does by screwing onto the uh, lens portion. And the light attachment called the LG1 Light Guide shines a light around the lens so that you can move over to the microscope mode and literally lie the camera down, for example, just like this, and you can get super close up on something. And then you can always just zoom into whatever the object is and get really close to the action. You can see here that I'm actually doing that right now, uh, even without the light attachment, by just tilting the camera up a little bit. But you can get right on top of things if you happen to have the LG1 light guide. So that makes this like a telemacro type of lens in the right scenarios. The best that I could do was some nice close-ups of nature around me when taking the camera to the LA Arboretum, where of course I needed to get some nice shots of the ducks out there. Speaking of ducks, I tested out the waterproofing with some rubber duckies in a tub. It's far from an extreme water activity, I get it, but even then, I felt comfortable quite literally dropping the camera right into the water. Now, I knew it was going to be all right as long as the doors were double locked. Imagine taking this camera to the pool to get some fun memories of your kids playing around or to the beach to get some great shots from in and with the water. That's something most of us wouldn't really bring our large cameras or our phones to. Now from the shallow waters to even deeper into the depths, there are plenty of underwater shooting modes that are available uh, at the fish here on the dial. It's from here that you can change the shooting mode based upon the depth level. This is to change up the white balance accordingly. Now 4K video recording is available on here, topping out at 30 frames per second, but then I realized there's actually 120 frames slow motion capture here at 1080p resolution. I had to think, where could I actually show that off, even though I'm not necessarily out in nature a whole lot? But I did think of one place where that high-speed capture might be fun to get, and it might be the toughest thing I've done with a camera, or maybe in general. Welcome to Break Room LA, where you can get half an hour in a room with a crate of stuff that you can just smash with bats and crowbars and hammers. This was a fun experience, and in one instance, I wanted to get one of the bowls exploding right in front of the camera. I knew shards and all of that wouldn't really bother the rugged TG7, but I didn't account for the camera bouncing right up and tumbling down to the ground. With almost any other piece of tech, I would have had a heart attack, but we picked up the TG7 and it was perfectly fine. Break Room LA, make sure you guys check them out. I'll link them in the description. Now, to be fair, there are many more features that are in the TG7 that could be found through the scene modes in the menus. One in particular that makes perfect sense to me is down here. You have to go into the settings and actually turn on having the option, but here on the bottom right is the construction mode. All of these scenes make perfect sense for people who are maybe on site where conditions might not be, let's say, technology friendly. Anyone who wears a hard hat to protect their noggin will know that their point-and-shoot camera is just as protected. 
And then there are other modes in here that are available on other OM system cameras like the live composite and the time lapse, all of which are fun additions that adventurous photographers can dive into outside of everything that it can already do at its core. And finally, there is a pro capture that sets the TG7 to take photos, even leading up to when you hit the shutter button, which is a good option to have for action photography. And ultimately, it's all in this one little camera here, this little point and shoot, which is really impressive. Oh, and by the way, if you are an outdoorsy TikToker or an Instagram reel -er, the camera will render out vertical video accordingly so that you don't have to rotate it yourself in post. And so, there you have it. A rugged camera that is just as robust as a point and shoot as it is at withstanding the elements. Honestly, it's just great to play around with a good point and shoot. And it's even better that I can basically not care what happens to it. I obviously wouldn't willingly put the TG7 in the way of particularly harrowing danger, but it's still a peace of mind that I can't really say about pretty much any other camera that I have. So I want to thank OM System once again for partnering with me on this video and for letting me try out the tough TG7. If you're interested in this camera for your adventures, make sure you check out the link in the description below. But from there though, I'm gonna go ahead and call it on this one. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today and watching me smash some stuff. Please take care of yourselves and each other and enjoy your tea, everybody.